Look at this crap. Look. Also, welcome back, guys. It's crazy hair day. It's been a while since we've been in the shed, and I am making yellow belly lure. I'll go through this again. There'll be a picture of it on the bloody thumbnail. I've draw, drawn. I've drawn a yellow belly, and it wasn't until I sat down and started to draw a yellow belly that I realised just how crazy it is that they can swim. Uh, from the belly to the top, uh, disregarding thin fins, the fish are about a third of their length in height. Now this one is a little bit shorter, just under, because I'm going to put a couple of joints in it which should open it out and then put it in the right proportions. But uh, pretty happy with that, but the drawing of it, um, yeah, was probably the hardest fish I've drawn. You can see, we got a few. We're doing a batch of lures today, hopefully. The idea is one's for a bloke at work, Ty, one's for myself, uh, one's for the wife, and hopefully, if there's any others, we'll find someone to use, use them. What I've done is I've taken this lump of old hardwood post I've run it through my table saw and milled it down into 20 mil chunks like this and if I'm right I should be able to get two out of each one of these. So put that on that angle. Yeah, we better get another one there. I don't know how well this stuff floats or if it floats. I will do my best to make this swim but if you look at that grain there I'm hoping, because those grains are going this way, that by the time I finish this, sand it up, hit it with a flame, and give it a clear, we'll be able to see the pattern in there. So what I'm hoping to go for is a burnt nude lure with gold and black highlights. Probably going to do uh, Lexan fins, where I do fins. So I'll paint them, obviously, a bit of black, bit of gold, and then a yellow belly, golden perch. So probably do some gold around here, but hoping for the main uh, side of the fish to be a uh, bit of burn, sanded back, and that red finish. Uh, might even get the burn gun out to burn the detail in. So what we're gonna do, as always, is cut these out, glue them on, Cut the shapes, start making some lures. Let's go. Ridiculous. I've had this on, it's still on my nose. Crazy stuff. Um, as you may have noticed, I got six. Once the fins are off, I got six of them to um, sit on the timber. And my sandpaper is struggling, my bandsaw was struggling. Uh, they don't cool this hardwood for no reason. It's very, very hard to work with. Uh, withstands weather really well, lasts a long time, that's why they used to build houses out of it and stuff here. Look at that. Look at the dust, just from that. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to mark some stuff. Oh, life's home. And I mark stuff while it's square like this, because it's easier. You find a center line, you can mark everything you want on it because it's square. And guys out there on YouTube that are really, really skilled will shape everything and then go, uh, yep, there, and yep, there. And it's just 
a lot easier to do it this way. If you have that skill, kudos. If you're learning, mark everything you want to mark now, where your center line is so you can put some little holes or just use a punch to mark your hook hangers and stuff and then you know where they are for the rest of the build. Um, I also want to cut my slots now while it's at this size and I'm going to mark where my fins are going to stick into the fish at the end. All right, so I'll mark all that out so that I can have some slots because what I'm going to do is cut these out on Lexan. I'm going to draw in like this on the Lexan and cut a little, uh, little bit longer and I'm going to cut a slot and we're just going to glue it straight into the to the timber like that so it'll have Lexan fins. So that's what we're kind of looking at there. If we don't have calipers, get some. Zero it off. And it should be about 20 mil. 20.6. 20.5. 20.6. So it's pretty uniform. It doesn't matter if you're not bang on center. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you're not bang on center because you're going to then develop everything from your center line. So I go, okay, this is 20.6 and I want this lure to be 18 at its thickest part. So then you'd mark your center line at nine mil. You work off one side Right, and then you'd mark the other side off. And when you sand that side, and just sand it into wherever your marks are. It doesn't really matter. But the closer you get to the center, the easier it is to mark everything out. So if we're at, say, 20.6, we're at 10.3, let's go 10.25. And you're on 0 0.01, 0 0.02 of a mil. Really easy to go over the overboard. 10.26, that'll do us. <clears throat> All you do, sit your calipers like that, so they're just off the side, and score yourself a line. All right, that line is now what you'll do everything for your lure off. What you'll do, what you'll do everything for your lure off. And uh, do this. Oh, thank goodness that fridge shut up. Gonna do that for the rest of the lures and we'll come back to you. So what I've done is just mark where those fins will be on one fish. And then Put it into there, and I'm going to transfer that across to all the fish. And I transfer the front of the fin. Now this one here, which some people might be going, what is that that he's marking? That's the change in the fin, and the slot will have to go all the way through, but I'm just trying to put all the detail on so that I know um, where, if anywhere, I might have uh, be able to put the joins. That's our fin markings. What I need to do now is have a look at joints. Now. I've found from experience that you really want to go biggest to smallest in your joints. So in your biggest, then your next biggest, then your smallest piece. Or biggest, next smallest, next smallest, smallest. Like depending on how many joints you want to do. But <clears throat> the reason for that is that you're telling the front you want the front to move. Now, so you want the front to move and you want the next piece to follow it. Then you want the next piece to follow that. If the piece at the back's heavier, it won't follow the piece in front of it. It's too heavy. So it's, I found it's better to have biggest, um, big, middle, smallest. That's what I found so far. So that's what we're gonna work on. I'm thinking, join, 
there, join here somewhere, join, cut the, cut the fin, which is not a problem, we'll do, they'll just be part of the fin on the first piece, and a bit on the next piece. Alright, so let's go 60, and that's 32, and that's 25. Now, I drew this inside a box on this sh on this sheet of paper. So this is actually the center line of the fish. So if I want to do a line that's square, let's line up bits of the matho map on a line because I know it's square. Yep. And then that is a square cut through the fish. And what I should do, is make sure that this one is square too. It's not quite, but it's not far off. Dot there, dot there. Bloody math and maths for the win, people. Not far off at all, really. Hook points. Now, I've nearly always got a proven swim bait in my shed here. It's not really to cheat off, it's more to look at uh, joint placement and hook placement. And you can see what I was just talking about, big, middle, small. All right, the joints are like substantially bigger. Um, but they've got a hook right up the front here, so that really helps me decide that that's actually not a bad idea so and i just put a little h there for hook what i might do is, is go for a hook point here i'm going to change this fin i'm going to bring this fin down all right and like that so that is not really a yellow belly fin that allows us to put our hook point right where we want it. I'm gonna go without lead to start with. I went and checked this, it does float, but not, not super, it's not super buoyant. By the time I put uh, hardware in here, I put some polyurethane to water seal it. Hopefully the weight of the hooks is enough to give it a slow sink and that should be enough to give it the upright. It should still be wanting to float, but the hooks are pulling it down. So you got that um, negative force, uh, lure trying to go up, bottom trying to go down. That's what holds it upright. So hopefully, hopefully that's where we're at. So this is what things are worth looking at, right? And the toe point's almost smack center, right? So, this lure, that line's center right there. Right, so just on the nose, if we do a circle, that'll be our hook point. Well guys, as I mentioned, I've marked the joins, I've just copied what we wrote down on the paper yesterday onto here, and I've pinpointed toe point hook point. The second hook point, as in our picture, is just off the back of this anal bump, I guess you'd call it. But the anal fin's going to go in there. So I'm not marking them just yet because I need to figure out that exactly. I've put grooves in for the fins, as you're seeing right now. So what we're up to now is we're going to jump over, put a jig in, and cut our Vs into almost the center. Then we're gonna mark out our profile from the top and start sanding the, the sides in and uh, marking chamfer lines and giving the fish a general shape. The reason we do this part now once the lure is rounded and not square all the way down the sides, it's really hard to get a nice 
even angle from both sides and meet in the center. So we do this while it's square, but we don't cut it all the way through because we want to shape it as one piece. But it will give us our marks to cut through to later. Here's a square, mark across. That should be the same point, right? I'll meet about bang in the middle. This one will too. That's what you're after. So I'm just marking the top profile. I want their shoulders are fat so i really want them to be fat here but they've actually got a narrow little head so i'm going to come in from this point down to here and then keep the shoulders fat and slowly taper off back to the tail i'm just going to sand that on the sander and then we'll do some chamfer lines and carve them in so i'm just going to do that for for all of them <laughs> Another day, mind the work shirt. Now that we've got them all looking like this, pretty spiffy. Good day, Lexi. Good day, Lex. So, now that we've got them all looking like this, they're pretty good. Now, the hardwood does chip easy, so there's a few from when you're carving it, it tears down the grain, the few little divots. There's also some damage from wood grubs and stuff. I'm gonna leave that as a feature. But now we've gone to this stage. I've printed out heads. And I've done, uh, so I scanned my, my fish in, sort of cut the shape, copied it, and I reversed it. And that gives me both sides of my fish. I've never done it this way before, but I can just glue this on each side, carve it all out, and then sand the paper off afterwards, done. So what we're gonna do now is cut these out and then proceed to tape them on. Probably use the burner if a knife doesn't wanna work real well in marking it. And then we'll go about shaping uh, the head out. Well, I've just given them a rough sand. I've carved them with the Dremel and given them a rough sand. Before we seal them, I'm gonna burn them. Because we're doing the burnt finish, and I'm gonna seal these with polyurethane, they won't burn as well. Sit down. They won't burn as well once it's sealed. I assume. I don't actually know, but I do assume. I'm gonna burn them now, then I'm gonna sand them a little bit more. I'm gonna drop some super glue where the eye hole will be and drill the eye sockets. And then we're gonna submerse them. Yeah, then we're gonna submerse them in the vacuum chamber in polyurethane and seal them right up. And hopefully, we start to have some sort of a lure looking who's it.
Let's go set these on fire. So obviously crispy, not as crispy, sort of mixed them up a little bit and then we're going to give them a sand, see what they sort of look like after a bit of a sand. Alright, next step in making these lures is uh, not to forget that's the nostril, that's the eye. Is to just get a bit of super glue. Oh, not like that, no. Too much. Just enough there is what we want. What we're trying to do with these lures is seal the eyes. So, um, just put a dollop right there. Uh, not seal the eyes. Stop the eyes from blowing out. So this is how you stop lure eyes from blowing out. Is just put some super glue like that. And then that bit of timber will be hard and it won't tear out with your drill bit. So, um, and you do this with any timber that's trying to blow out on any lure you're trying to make. So surface lures, divers, swim baits, anything that you're making out of timber this is the way to do it if you guys are new to the channel and you want to uh, see other lures being made or know how to make other lures i've got uh, some bank builds like building lures on the bank surface lures divers other swim baits um the corn cob paddlers so these are surface paddlers it's dusty surface paddlers made out of corn cobs so I've got more of them coming. I've got uh, lures made out of stone. So I've got plenty of uh, build videos if you guys want to see some lure build videos. Right, sealing the lure. Uh, for those who don't know, it's water waterproofing the wood, waterproofing the timber so that if you get scratches in your clear coat and your paint your lure doesn't just swell and get ruined so we're using polyurethane um, it's watered down a little bit but it still works really well in a vacuum chamber and what that will do is um, it'll be submersed the vacuum will actually suck any air out because it's the first thing to be vacuumed out it's the uh, least uh, uh, air offers the least resistance so it vacuums out and the hollows in the wood can't have nothing in them when the air sucked out so polyurethane sucked in and it waterproofs and hardens the wood so the easiest way I think to do this is going to be just to lay, put them all in here um, they're going to float but I'm just going to put some mesh over the top that they can't get past Something like that. Yeah. And, and jam that down so it holds them under. Let there be light. So what we do is we sit the chamber on, open the inside one so it forms a vacuum. Turn it on, push down, and we have vacuum. You can see the needle going around, and we'll see bubbles start to come. Not that you can see through, this keeps getting dirty. But you'll see bubbles 
forming on the surface there that's what's coming out of the timber and we need to watch this to make sure that the bubbles don't up and overflow over the container or through the vacuum chamber so just keep an eye on it and if it gets to that point we just release this let the bubbles drop back down they won't go back into the timber start again vacuum it up but we're getting a real good vacuum because it's hardwood it's not like balsa or pine it's not going to have tons of air in it you can see that climbing so that's uh it we just make sure we vacuum the crap out of it and then we dry them they're sealed see the bubbles coming to the top there now they're about to overflow so that's all air that's come out of the lures and then we just drop it back down obviously the air doesn't go back through the liquid so there's no air going back into the lures but we can draw more air out of the lures now and they'll be saturated with polyurethane uh, the timber will be harder, hardier and waterproof I've taken the wire out I repeated that process four times, it's still floating that's good because you want some buoyancy in your lures um, they're not over waterlogged but they'll be definitely drenched with four repeats enough to be sealed there's plenty inside them so we're just going to wipe that off just like that and they're looking cool nice and dark and yeah. Yeah, there's still going to be a little bit of excess that we we can't get so i'm going to put them on the rotisserie and let them rotate away and dry and we get back to these until tomorrow night so they'll be well and truly dry by then so here they are, sealed and spinning. Going to do a little bit on the fins and then I'm going to cool it. We'll finish them off tomorrow night. Lexan polycarbonate is the best bib material and the best fin material for lures. A close second is Bayer's version, which is Macrolon sheet. Not quite as good as Lexan, but pretty close. Now, people go, oh, Lexan, Lexan, Lexan. Lexan isn't a product, it's a brand, right? Polycarbonate is the product. Lexan is the top polycarbonate. Macrolon, it's polycarbonate. It's the second best, in my opinion. Then there are some cheap ones you can get on eBay. Do not touch because you'll put them in as a bib or fins or whatever and your lure will get cast into something, hit a rock or whatever, and they have no durability and they snap. You might as well use Bunnings brand clear perspex sheeting or something. Um, it's useless for the job. Uh, on that note, don't use clear perspex sheeting. It's not good. So... Macrolon uh, in 2 mil. I'm going to glue my little templates like that up the right way. Let's do them up the right way. On here, I'm going to cut out all my fins. I did the copies for how many I wanted and then I thought about hook points and that afterwards. So this had the original fin. So I've just drawn some crappy little fins. Some of them are better than others. Um, and we can reshape them as they're done, but oh, this is getting a bit late to start the saw up with uh, the neighbors there. So I'll, um, I'll do that tomorrow night. Welcome back to the shed. This is where we left off and this is where we're gonna continue. I've got a coffee. And a HSP. Heart attack. Speciality pack. Mm -mm. These are like the best thing ever. Look at that. Oh. Excuse me. So, these should be dry and they feel different now. I love how. You hear that? You hear that? Okay. 
bit of the wood that was cut out of tapped on the table. Still sounds hard. The lure. Just. It's just so much stronger. It's waterproof now. Just so much better. So, that's the polyurethane. Should have sealed that burn in and everything. So what we're up to now is cutting out the fins, giving these a sand anywhere they need a bit of a sand, gluing the fins in. All the fins are cut out and sitting where they should be. I'm just going to use a Dremel to mark the fins um, and then we're just going to do some sanding and glue them in. What I've done is sat um, each one in its slot with some super glue. I've then adjusted it to where I'm pretty sure it's lined up and then spritzed it which we need to buy some more but with activator sets the super glue straight away. So there's only a couple of drops in there. Where there's bigger gaps and stuff, I'm going to put some of the shavings in. And if that doesn't work, I will use some baking soda and super glue. And um, this and super glue or baking soda and super glue, fill it in. Because we'll probably be, we'll be painting the fins and we'll be painting uh, the top and the bottom some highlights and stuff. So it's not the end of the world. But let's see how we go with this because the more this works, the less area we have to paint. Right, I'm not sure where I left you guys, but um, I think I think I just super glued some fins in. What I've done then is mix up some well, micro spheres, which are little glass balls, tiny, like they feel like powder. They're microscopic glass balls filled with air. And what they do is make things light. With some of the wood chips and I mix that with resin. Now the reason I did that is so that when I glued the fins in with the resin it was easy to sand back. So and I've done that. Sanded all that back so that's all they're all resined in and sanded back. I've then taken one. I'm hoping they're all similar enough that one one measurement's enough. I taped the hooks and rings to it and some bits of wire to account for the screw eyes to see what happened. Without anything, they float with the hooks, rings and wire, they sink. So I don't think we're going to need any lead. They don't sink fast, they just sink. So by the time we add some clear coat and whatever, I think that's going to be good. The hooks are on the bottom obviously, so that's going to be our negative force. The lure wants to float, the hooks want to sink, that should keep it upright. So. Um, I've done this, we've done all our screw eyes, our, uh, our joints, and our straights, uh, there's a lot of them, um, so, so there's quite a few that I just did. I'm going to cut the joints through on the lures, and that should cut the fins, the reason I've glued the fins in so the fins will be cut onto each section that they should be on. Then I'm going to drill out all the holes, glue in the uh, screw eyes for the toe point hook hanger, um, hook hanger, and I'm going to mark and drill the holes for the joins. <laughs> Right, next day, I clearly didn't finish the lures last night. I gave up, went home. Oh, I thought I could hear you. Where do you think you're going? So, for some reason, this clip has come out uh, playing super fast and hasn't recorded any audio. The clip either side of it on the GoPro has. I don't know what's happened there if I've bumped something and taken a time lapse instead of um, a video. But anyway, it's got no audio. Of course, it's a clip where I'm explaining things to you and I'm putting the joins in. So what I explained 
is that I've used the calipers and I set them to whatever height down from the top of the lure I want my join to be at. Then when I use the calipers from the top of both pieces, where it marks on each piece of the lure is the same point. So when you drill out at that point and put your joins through, they'll line up with each other. So if you imagine when your lure is a single piece, you've cut it, the top and the bottom are at the same point. So if you use the calipers, which are set height, and come down from the top on the left and the top on the right, and come up from the bottom on the left and the bottom on the right, those points will be the same points. And that's how you get a perfectly lined up joint. And then I just go ahead and drill them out and make sure they all fit. And I can't believe this clip is the one that didn't have audio. I use a bit of wire. The same wire I've made the eyelets out of because it's half the diameter because it's not twisted back on itself. And put the glue, push it down, right down in there. Get it in as, as good as you can into the hole. Make sure you get plenty of epoxy for it right in there. Like that. Then you want to put it all over the thread on the eyelet. Get it all over there like that. Line it back up. And screw it in. And these are uh, opposite to normal thread. So I'm actually screwing these uh, left hand thread. Tweak it to where you want it, like that. And then wipe out the excess glue. Um, I, I've done these in a couple of batches because they're you don't want the resin to dry, so I mix up a little bit, do a couple, mix up the next lot, do a couple. This is the last lot here. Um, so the others, the first ones I did will be dry, so we'll go start painting them and then we'll just work through and paint all of the lures. While the glue's drying, just having a look at this uh, photo of a yellow that I caught a while ago. Although we're keeping the sides nude, the colours that are add to the fins I want to be somewhat natural. So I've had a bit of a look. I've made up this gold colour, custom gold. I've got this gold as well. So the custom gold is to match this gold down around here. I don't know if you can see, but under the tail, which is predominantly like a blue-grey, there is gold. But it's more like this gold I'm going to have. So I'm going to have that gold under there um, with blue-grey over the top. It's sort of got bits of gold, but this blue, grey and dark green sort of around the top there. So I've made this dark green. And what I'm trying to do now is make a blue, grey. So what I've started with, instead of using all my white, I've started with this really light lavender purple colour. I've put four drops of turquoise. Um, uh, Pearlised, so with the sparkles in it. With the little sparkly bits. And I've put three drops of black. See if we can't get into a blue grey, which we're starting to head to already. And another three of that, and three black. Also, I've got a pearlized silver. I'll put a couple of drops of that in, just to give it a bit of shine. Fish are naturally shiny. You get some, especially yellows. You get the sun on them, and that gold area just shimmers. Uh, really good looking fish when you get the right one. Really ugly looking fish when you get the wrong one. So, Alright, nice blue grey with pearlized little shimmery bits in it. So looking at the yellow, I've got green. Yellow green, blue grey, yellow gold, gold gold, nude sides. I reckon we're about ready to have a go at painting. I've got a cup of acetone. I'm going to just bring every piece over. 
Oh, it's really quick, quiet, just from any dirty fingerprints or anything that are all over it. Like that. Nice, ready to paint. Then, out of the clip, into a clamp. Next piece, same deal. So I might start with that gold and do the tails with the gold and then I'll do the grey over it with the with the patterns. So I'm going to use the comb to give lines, makes sense. But I'm also going to do this just for something different, just to have some random different patterns on some of them so they're not all exactly the same. Uh, greens at the top, golds underneath. Water to wash out the airbrush. This distilled water, not just tap water. Got a bottle, bottle down there, distilled water. Um, yeah, let's get painting. Painting is done. Um, memory card's on this one. Must have had stuff on it because I haven't had it in for that long. Anyway, you will be looking at footage now. After I was happy with the paint on each of them, I just gave a spritz of gold so they have a gold sheen over them. I'm going to jump over here now, glue the eyes and the heads, then clear coat. Put them on the rotisserie. Time for the magic. Clear coat. Clear coat is what makes lures pop. It just makes them pop. So, what we have here is the head. I'm going to try and keep them together again. I'm using KBS Diamond Clear. It's a one part. Shake it up. Really well. Like that. What a workout. It's either a hard workout or I'm very unfit. Right, eh? Like that. And all we do with KBS. Diamond clear. It's bloody dunk, you're lowering. These the joints and stuff I'll clean up afterwards. But let's uh, let's see. This is where you find out what your lower gonna look like. Something like that. Hey, 
Yes. Pretty happy with that. All right. Droop it off, put it on the rotisserie, do the next piece. And repeat, I'm just going to be doing that for all of them. I'll show you when they're on the rotis. Right here guys, this is what we're looking at. Very, very nice. Pretty happy with these. So what I'm going to do is leave them on the rotisserie. I'm going to go and start editing this video. And they might not be fully assembled by the end of this. Or they might. I'm not sure if I get this finished tonight. Um, if I do, I'll upload it at this point. Um, otherwise, I'll assemble these in the morning, hopefully, and then upload it then. So, should be good. Alright. I'll either leave you here. If I leave you here, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to see more lure builds and fishing videos. Um, yeah, really appreciate the views, guys. Share it around. Tell your friends. And uh, catch you in the next video.